out and safe. Ukraine says all women, children and the elderly have been evacuated from the Azovstal steel plant. For months, they sheltered in underground bunkers, while Ukrainian fighters from the Azov battalion attempted to prevent Russian soldiers from completely taking over the port city. President Zelensky repeatedly called on the United Nations to help lead civilians to safety through humanitarian corridors. Russia agreed to a number of ceasefires to facilitate evacuations. Both Kyiv and Moscow repeatedly accused one another of violating the truce. Well, since yesterday we were we were being told that the Taliban are going to announce a new dress code for the women, but no one had an idea that this will be such a harsh code. The announcement by the Ministry of Promotion of uh, Virtue and the Suppression of Vice has been has said that the Afghan women must now wear a full veil when leaving their homes. The terms that ha that uh, are used in in the code issued by the ministry are nevertheless very vague and they are subject to various interpretations. It does not say that it is compulsory for the women to wear a uh, a complete burqa, which is a long dress, uh, often blue. Uh, which covers the face and the rest of the body up, up, up to the ankles, or, or what we call here, looking at the cup, which reveals the eyes. Well, Egypt's military says 11 troops, including an officer, have been killed in a militant attack. The ambush took place this Saturday in the northern part of the Sinai Peninsula at a water pumping station east of the Suez Canal. The Egyptian military said that the troops were killed in clashes with the militants. No group has claimed responsibility. Thirteen years after a plane crashed off the Comoros Islands in 2009, the trial opens on Monday in Paris. There were no survivors amongst the 152 passengers that were aboard the Yemenia flight. There are several reasons why it has taken so long. There is the fact that the main parties involved in this case, including Yemen, Yemenia, the Comoros and even to a lesser extent France, did not really want to cooperate in the investigation that was underway. France's Emmanuel Macron was sworn in for his second term as president on Saturday. He promised to lead with a new method, in a country where presidents are rarely re-elected. Macron won 58.5% of the votes in an April 24 second round against far-right candidate Marine Le Pen. In a short speech, he said his second term would be new and not merely a continuation of the first. Among the 500 guests present were former presidents François Hollande and Nicolas Sarkozy, as well as former prime ministers, religious leaders and other state figures. A defining moment for Northern Ireland. Those are the words of Sinn Féin leader Michelle O'Neill, describing her party's historic result in local elections. The Irish Nationalist Party, whose mission is to unite Ireland, won the largest share of votes in the British province for the first time ever. O'Neill is on course to lead the next government. She said it was time for a healthy debate on moving towards a united Ireland. Hong Kong is back in news. The man who oversaw the crackdown on pro-democracy movement back in 2019 in Hong Kong is Hong Kong's new leader. Now his name is John Lee. He's 64 years old. He ran a one-horse race to succeed Hong Kong's outgoing leader, Carrie Lam. No points are guessing who this man is loyal to. Lee is also one of the 11 senior Hong Kong and Beijing officials who has been sanctioned by the United States over crackdown on protests in 2019. A Hong Kong election committee voted today to elect the new leader. The committee comprises of 1,500 members who are largely pro-Beijing.
A police officer and two patients have been killed at New Somerset Hospital. The two patients died on the scene while the officer passed away later. Now, a man who was a patient at the hospital grabbed a firearm from a police officer and fired several shots. The suspect has been taken into custody and the Western Cape Health Department says that the man was already discharged from the hospital and was waiting for transport. The Pentagon UFO program in the United States has released 38 technical papers to the public that detail what it says are harmful effects on humans due to UAP UFO exposure. It's over 1,500 pages of previously classified documents compiled by the Advanced Aerospace Weapon System Application Program that list symptoms suffered by people exposed to UFOs such as burns, hair loss, nausea, headaches and even unaccounted for pregnancy. Contrary to what the New York Times reported and numerous other outlets reported, the real name of the secret government UFO program was AWSAP, Advanced Aerospace Weapon System Application Program, exactly like you said, so you reported it correctly. They produced over 200 reports. We're seeing 1% of them in these intelligence reference documents. So these 38 reports, they talk about the technical capabilities of what we know as UFOs. UFOs are, are not a, a part of the imagination. It's not a delusion. You've done been told UFOs are real. You've been told by your government, by our government. They are swarming our Navy warships. They are tampering with our nuclear weapons. So at a minimum, this is a national security issue.